Hey, welcome to Drill Tip Tuesday. My name is Koji Kuna and on this channel I share my learnings along the path of the creative journey. My path looks different than yours, but we can learn from each other. And today's Draw Tip Tuesday video is a little bit different because, well, as I said, we can learn from each other. And, you know, inspiration comes from everywhere and especially from other artists as well. And I am about to hop on a Zoom call with my friend Mike Lowry. He's a very inspiring illustrator. His art is completely different from mine. His creative path and his job is completely different than mine. But we are like-minded and that's why we love to chat and draw together. He has a course coming up and I'm going to ask him about it because it's all about how to put your portfolio together as an illustrator and get paid to draw. So I will pick his brain about this while we draw because I think it can be really valuable for you if you are looking to see what the next steps could be to become an illustrator in the professional field then this course is definitely for you. And other than that this half hour of chatting and drawing will be packed with tips. So have fun watching. Hey Mike. Hello Kosha. How are things with you? Things are very good. Things are great. How are things with you? Things are super great. And I am super happy that we are chatting because we haven't seen each other for a while. It's been a and, long time. Um, and we get to draw together, which is awesome. Wait, we're going to draw? Yes. I should, I should have brought some art supplies. I oh. know. Oh, wait a minute. There oh, you oh. go. I was going to give I'll just you use one, this but... and this. So, perfect. <laughs> Uh, without further ado, let's let's just get started. And then while we are drawing, we can chat. Um, so okay. you sent me uh, a couple of photos mm -hmm. to draw from. They are really great. I'm also afraid because they are of mountains and of llamas. Yeah. And I am not great at drawing animals or landscapes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait a minute. So what does that so animals and landscape, that's kind of you're now listing all topics. So humans, <laughs> I guess, or cities. So you Yeah, okay. So, well, but this is this is this your is chance really... to get out of your comfort zone. Exactly. So I think that might also be one of the tips today, because this is Draw Tip Tuesday, step out of your comfort zone, get over yourself. So that's what I will be doing today. Get over yourself. You know, I think the 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 main takeaway that I see, so I did the two images that I picked uh, are related to, I am currently planning to go to Peru and still in the planning stuff, you know what I mean? But like, this is my favorite. I always get so excited about a trip that I always want to end up drawing stuff about it while I'm planning, you know? So that's kind yeah. of my tip is like, if there's a dream place that you've always wanted to go, Peru is absolutely, it's in my top three places that I've wanted to go. I haven't been yet. It's one of the top three. Like when I'm daydreaming about trips and stuff, I always like to take that energy and turn it into a drawing. So that is what we're doing today. I love it. All right. So this is the kind of landscape that I do. Oh, this like behind it. the lady. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to, let's do it. Let's jump in and do a drawing. I want to show you real quick. I keep a sketchbook really different uh, mm -hmm. or different than I think a lot of people do is I tend to draw one little tiny thing that happens from the day. So I'm going to go through mine kind of quick. I put stuff in mine, like little, we went to a little museum. Uh, my oldest kid and I, she's 16. We went to this uh, museum in Portland and I saved little stuff, but I go through mine kind of quick because it's all just personal moments from trips and uh, I don't, it's a diary for me. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like we're, we're kind of like, this is a good match right now. Cause you do a lot of cityscape and drawing in the moment on site. And I tend to draw from photos a lot and I'll draw little moments uh, from my day anyway. Okay. So let's, we can, I told you I was going to be chatty. This is from, Oh, this was one of my favorite moments of january 1st i like to collect just little moments and sometimes they're big right it might be a, an international trip 
but it might just be there was a moment on January 1st. We did not have a crazy party night, New Year's Eve. <laughs> we hung out with the kids until, you know, midnight. And uh, then the next day, there was a point where we were just reading together on the couch. And my son had his legs kind of crossed over mine. And you I know, love I love those tangled feet. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, it's not sometimes it's just about eating sushi or oh, this was a moment from New Year's Eve where the neighbors did a firework that was a smoke bomb. It just left uh, a big cloud of smoke that stayed in the air. Anyway, let me kind of go through it again. These are all just little personal moments. Okay. Are you ready? I'm going to draw on this other book so it's a little bigger so you can see it. Excellent. Well, thank you for that quick little um, sketchbook tour. I love seeing other people's art and yours is so fun. So we are drawing Peru, the dream place. Yeah. Do you have any dream locations right now? A place that you've always um, wanted to go, but you haven't been yet? Uh, yes, Japan is on my list. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I have never been. It is on my list, but it's also far and uh, when to plan it and all that. And of course, I am lucky enough to um, uh, to travel a lot for work as well. So, right. yeah, I've been to really fantastic places. Uh, sorry, I'm drawing and, and talking at the same time. And I'm drawing a llama. <laughs> <laughs> oh i like it you know it's i so i kind of started my videos differently i don't know if you can see it but i um yeah, I'm sure can. you can see it. i don't know why so that i have a camera pointed at it um <laughs> i started a little different because the two images that i picked are um are just kind of this i didn't really like either one of them for their um the uh actual uh what's the word i'm looking for the act, I didn't like the layout of them or composition. Is yeah. 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 I, yeah. I, it, I love it. How it's like, there's these things that we've talked about, you know, our entire lives. And then you start drawing and trying to talk about it. And mm -hmm. um, then it sort of changes the ability to use your brain at all. But, <laughs> or your words. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, but I didn't really like necessarily the composition of either one. And so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of using them to make, a little decorative thing. Love that. Around mine. So let's see here. Yeah, yeah, and that is really your illustrator's instinct. And then I have this tendency to draw what I see and take it quite literally, but I am planning to combine the llamas with the landscape. So yeah. we'll see how that works out, but yeah. Well, and I try not to think too much about what it's going to look like before I start drawing. That's um, a good idea. And I do actually go straight to ink a lot in my sketchbook. It's another mm -hmm. one of the reasons why I just went really quickly and showed you my sketchbook, because a lot of it's not really, my sketchbook is not an every single day I'm, you know, using it to make something to post on Instagram or whatever. Right. My sketchbook is something that I, it's my diary. So there's some personal stuff yeah. in there. And I make a lot of mistakes and everything. Anyway, okay. Um, so while we draw, I do want to talk about this thing, this big project that I have been working yes. on. And you are aware of it. Mm -hmm. and, and that is, I'm going to tell you a little background story here, which is that when I was in school, we learned a ton about making art, like what we do on a channel like this. But I didn't really know how to make a living with my art. And so right. I started teaching some classes that you are familiar with. I want to make sure that your group knows about it, mm -hmm. where I break down that line between, you know, actually making art and then getting paid to make art. Yes. And, and that is kind of what you are actually doing is kind of revealing something that seems secret or unknown or highly impossible for many people right oh I think it seems highly impossible and I think that there's a lot of people I mean myself included when I was getting started it seemed like there it was all about some connection thing or yeah. even worse I think that there were a lot of people that think that making a living with your art means only getting good at making art and that 
eventually, I don't know that somebody would just reach out to you. I, I really genuinely thought that, mm-hmm. that, that you just make art. And then if I wasn't getting opportunities, it's because, you know, people weren't reaching out to me and saying like, Hey, do you want to illustrate for this magazine or something right. like that? And right. what I learned was that's the not it. I mean, of course that's not how it works. Right. Mm-hmm. People have to know about your work. You have to have good work in your portfolio uh, to get those kind of projects. Anyway, so when I was starting out, I didn't know any of that stuff. I didn't really know what a portfolio was. I didn't know what options there were in the world of illustration. And I'm going to tell you uh, what happened was, so I used to teach. I taught at the Savannah College of Art and Design. I taught at other art illustration programs. And I left maybe six or seven years ago, and I was really missing the teaching part. So I started putting together a list of some of these things that I had kind of learned. I'm sure you get them too, where students, when they're graduating, will say, I have a couple of questions about, you know, keeping a sketchbook Mm -hmm. or something like that. Sure, yeah. Started putting all that stuff together, and I ended up realizing it was a lot of information. (laughs) And So yeah, so now I teach this, uh, this class once a year. That's all about just how to build a portfolio that gets assignments and how to get your work actually in front of art directors. Yeah, that's fantastic. And even, I mean, the title of the workshop is just perfect. Getting paid to draw. I mean, that's what it's all about, right? It's pretty direct, huh? Yeah, it's funny. It is. (laughs) When I was thinking of what the title could be, I, you know, I was playing around with some not not poetic but something that wasn't nearly as direct and I realized I was like no I and I think that the only reason I was not going direct initially is because I do think there's this weird thing so I went to school for fine art and for drawing and for graphic design and it's funny especially in the world of fine art there's just this weird stigma with combining art and making a living with it where it yeah, feels making it your being business. gross or something or yeah um and I actually did have this is a story that I've told a bunch but it's true I really did have a teacher when I was in grad school that said to me uh you know not to ever think about money and art together that it ch- like cheapens art and mm-hmm. I was like well then how am I going to make a living? You know, I wanted, yeah. I wanted to make a living making art. And um, so I don't know, I just really powered through and was like, I'm going to try and break down some of this, this weird negative idea that you aren't really allowed to make, you know, it's like kind of perpetuating this idea of like a starving artist, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. And right I don't know yeah. where that comes from. I don't know why people think that that's like some celebrated thing, because it's not, I like eating, you know? <laughs> Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> getting clothes for my kids. Yeah. So yeah. So this is the we've been doing it for a few years now. And it's not, it's not a it's not one of those like feel good. This is not something where we get together and I say, uh, oh, you're so good. You deserve whatever. I really just mm-hmm. outline step by step what I consider to be, you know, fundamental steps in actually making a living as an illustrator. It's not right. full of fluffy, cheesy stuff. It's just me talking. And we do have on a lot of guests. Um, over the years, we've had a lot of illustrators and art directors. Uh, we always get questions about, I'm sure you can guess, but we get a lot of questions about illustration agents. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people, you know, wonder if you have to have an illustration agent yeah, uh, and how to get publishing contracts and all of these other things um and we just we meet for eight weeks and we just talk about everything related with the world of the business of illustration it's not a drawing class there's a lot of drawing in it but nobody is doing this you know not everybody's going to end up with the same project everybody's doing projects that are based on you know their voice and their way of working and stuff like that so anyway it's pretty you can tell I have a lot to say about it, so I don't want to like fill up the whole time, but. No, that's, I mean, I think it's very interesting and I think it's something that um, you make it uh, more accessible for people who just don't know where to start if they 
know that they want to be an illustrator and get paid for it. Yeah. Um, and and I think it's I like what you say that it's not like well you're so great and let's draw together. Right. No, it's just everybody needs to work hard to you know get where they want to get. And um, yeah, right. I think it's really interesting that you get people from the field who can um, talk about you know their experience. That's just right, and it's, quite, the experiences are very it. different. You know, you and I both we are artists. We make a living as artists. Yeah. Our, our experience, our and our way of getting here has been so different. Oh yeah. And, and I think that that's a really interesting thing that I like, and I really wasn't exposed to that coming out of school. I was no. very lucky, which it's kind of funny to say, but I was very lucky that in I went to a very 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 small college, and I was lucky that I had one class that talked about some business related stuff. Now it was, um, you know, it was long enough ago that we still like part of it was about um, creating slides of your paintings, you know, mm -hmm. taking photos and, and, and learning right. how to submit to galleries, but it was great. Cause then I actually learned how to submit to galleries. And I think that that helped a lot. And I think that there are a lot of people that don't get that stuff at all. Right. And again, it's making art is really, and coming up with your style and all these other things, it's, it is a big part of being an artist, but if you want to make a living as an artist, you, you are a small business and yeah. you end up having to, I mean, I know that you know this and mm -hmm. you, I know that you draw for work, but it's yeah. just a part of what you do. Right. I mean, how it many absolutely other is. are you? I just, doing? yeah. Um, I just had a meeting with a friend and we were talking about this also. She has a different kind of job, but also uh, part of it is creativity. And uh, I was like, well, some people think that I am drawing all day. <laughs> like yeah. That is so far from the truth. <laughs> right. Just, and I think yeah. but it, but it takes a lot to figure that out. Right. And yeah, um, it does. I am realizing with my drawing right now, which I think we're doing pretty good talking and drawing. We uh, are, yeah. Well, you, I, I was just listening, so that, <laughs> I was lucky. <laughs> um, I'm realizing that I, so a lot of times I go straight to ink, but I realized with yeah. this one, my my plan was to do the drawing and then erase it, but there's no way. I'll, I'll have to wait an hour or two before this is really fully dried where I can actually erase oh, yeah. it. So I think that when we're done, I'm going to send you this one uh, so that everybody can see the final art. Yeah, that would be um, great. But uh, yeah, I think that it's interesting. And it, it's funny because in any time that I'm working, so I have to do a lot of writing for my job. So I, I make mm -hmm. kids books and I write books for adults and also, and I do a lot of, you know, information, you know, about this course and stuff like that. So a lot of what I do involves writing. And I feel like every time I'm in a really heavy writing phase, I always wish that I was just drawing all the time. Yeah. And, and I finished a project the other day and it was a, a chapter book. So it's a, a kid's book, but it's for older kids. And uh, yeah. I finished um, some pages for that. And it was, I, it was a 212 illustrations. Oh, wow. In one okay. book. And so then I was like, all I want to be doing is writing right now. You know, <laughs> Like yeah. there's never a moment where you're, <laughs> you're just never happy. No, but <laughs> I just think it's funny. But, you know, as you know, a lot of it is I have to reach out to clients. And honestly, I really like that part of it too. Yeah. I like the part where I'm, I love making a book pitch. Okay. That's something. That oh my I, goodness. I love it. And I, one of my favorite things to do is to be in the room and actually pitch a book because right. it's something that I've worked on. It's something that I'm excited about. I get to see their reactions. You know, that's changed a lot, of course, mm -hmm. um, over the last couple of years. Of course, now a lot of that stuff is digital or, you know, not digital, yeah. but over Zoom, um, yeah. which I don't want to complain too much about because that's what we're doing right now. But <laughs> careful. Uh, <laughs> the next one, we'll just meet up. We're going to meet up in person for the next one, right? I think that's a good idea. Let's do that. Uh, I know you're in the Netherlands. What city are you in? I am in Amersfoort, which is uh, a 35-minute train ride from Amsterdam. 
Oh, okay. It's like in the in the center of the Netherlands. Oh, okay. It's a small, small city, small, much smaller town than um, than Amsterdam, and quieter. Okay. And I am at the at the edge of town, so I have a lot of nature around. Me, oh, I love it. That's great. That's why I moved from Amsterdam to here. Yeah. What if I um was like, uh, what part? And you were like near Amsterdam, and I was like, I'm not familiar. What is Amsterdam? Um, the <laughs> There's this thing that happens with uh, with my wife where a, lo a lot of times when people from the U.S. find out that she's from Germany, I, I don't know why this is a natural reaction, but people will say, oh, Germany, what part? Uh, and then she yeah. always gives like the closest big city, which is Hanover. And they're like, yeah. we don't know where that is. And then I'll say, Tell okay, me well, if it, yeah. do you know where Berlin is? And they're like, well, not really. So it's yeah. like, oh, what did you say? What? Heard. why even ask is it because is it like this old idea that germany was divided between east and west or something oh yeah maybe maybe they're just wanting her to say uh west west germany <laughs> yeah that's very interesting yeah it happens a lot and i'm sure you can imagine but there's a lot of people that'll say oh you know i'm 187th german or whatever yeah Sure. Uh, I guess I probably um, have some German in me. I don't know. <clears throat> but anyway, well, I think I'm getting kind of close here. I think I, again, I would, I would sort of like to, um, I would sort of like to erase this, but I don't think I'm going to be able to erase this in front of you. Um, uh, don't take that risk. I know. You can you see here that I already. Yeah, I already I always smudge my ink. It's just terrible. <laughs> so here's the draw tip for me. I'm gonna talk for a second while you do this. My drawing tip is I like to take images from places that I'm going, you know, before the trip and smash them together and turn them into something else. This does not look like the reference photos. And then something else that I like to do, and this just sounds like really nuts and boltsy or whatever. This isn't as inspirational, I think. Uh, when I'm done, I always take a picture of the line art before I, I like to use ink wash. So I see that you're using actual watercolor. And mm -hmm. I always, in my sketchbook, is always ink wash, which is just ink mixed with uh, water. Water, so, so yeah mixed with water and I get this ink wash and uh, I almost never do color in my sketchbook because I am a big believer in like just packing light uh, maybe if I went on a longer trip I'm gonna have um, some other materials with me but I only carry ink wash before I do that ink wash I do tend to take a really good high-res photo with my phone mm. in case I ever you know here's a good example of one that I might color this digitally later so it's in my sketchbook but i could still use it for something maybe yeah. i don't know maybe i would make a print of it maybe uh, a sticker of it or something like that that's really smart to just make sure that you have it the smartphone cameras are so good yeah. that it's worth you know just documenting the process while you're working is this also some of the things um, you know, making it easier on yourself. Is that something that also is addressed in your course? The goal with the class initially was just to put everything step-by-step step together uh, into figuring out how to submit artwork. And what I realized mm. was, again, it's not a drawing class. It's not a Photoshop class. It's not a Procreate class where you learn a program. It's much right. more about how to build projects. And so I thought that would be the main goal. And it, it is mm -hmm. kind of Goal. but then what happened is I get so many good questions while I'm doing this class that I always end up answering so like for example somebody asked a question uh last year that I thought was really good and so we just talked about that which was just you know how many pieces should you have in a portfolio before you start sending artwork out mm -hmm. so when I was in school we learned you know you need I don't know somewhere between 12 to 24 pieces something like that and it's just, it's not the case anymore. You could absolutely get an illustration assignment having maybe four pieces in your portfolio. As long as those pieces wow. are really dedicated and targeting 
the client that you're trying to reach out to. So that is really on target with, you know, the kind of big topic, but That's little cool. questions would come up a lot too. I mean, I'm, I know you're not surprised by this, but I get a lot of questions about the kind of art supplies that I use. Yep. And so again, I do a lot of drawing in the class. You have to do a lot of drawing in the class, uh, but I'm not teaching a specific technique. But again, if people bring up questions like what pins are the best if you're going to use any kind of wet media, I'm not mm -hmm. going to say, uh, uh, we're not talking about that, you know? <laughs> um, and Forbidden. We, yeah, so I just talk about whatever. And and uh, and we have these kind of structured meetups where we can actually talk about that stuff. And somebody asked last year, and so I'm going to bring it back up again this year, just about which website uh, platforms I think are the best for hosting your portfolio. Oh, right. That's a good um, question. Yeah. Because that's something it took me forever to figure out. Yeah. Uh, and then once you have it figured out, I mean, especially I think because starting out, right, it was so hard to change any images that you had in your portfolio online that yeah. I never would update my my site. But I started using Squarespace. I just like it. There's some other really good ones. I know some people really like Wix. Um, right. I know that if you have the creative cloud subscription that Adobe has its own built-in options for a free website builder for portfolios. Anyway, so we, I break all that stuff down and I talk about, I've used other things in the past and I just talk about other things that just come up with the business. Oh, we had someone come on last year or actually for two years that talked about doing your taxes as an illustrator. Yeah, anybody who's in the States is like, you know, they feel the, like panic of me even saying that. Yeah. And in other places they're like, okay, you just hit click or whatever and then it's done. But well, here it was not the case. Yeah. And so we had a really, really great CPA that came in and talked to us about taxes. We've had illustration agencies that have come. Oh, we had editors that have come on from different children's book publishers. We have someone coming in this year. We've got two magazine, one as a creative director and the other person is a design director. And they're just going to be talking about how they find illustrators. Oh, that's so, yeah. so good. It's great. I feel like it started, I had this one really simple idea which was, I'm going to show people how to build a portfolio and how to submit their portfolio. But again, so many questions came up that, that I just kept adding in, you know, oh, why don't I talk about great ways of coming up with, you know, concepts for characters or things like that. Right. You can tell that I really like talking about that stuff. Yeah, but this is so great. I mean, I don't know if you know this, but I once was about to try my hand at becoming a professional illustrator okay. and then all kinds of other things things happened like me teaching online and then also starting sketchbook school and I just didn't even have you know the chance to really take that yeah. sort of plan seriously or you know make time for it and that was fine because life threw me some curveballs and I got some ideas but if I would have done this I would definitely have wanted your course because I mean if you have to invent the wheel all by yourself Right. You know, that's just, it's a lot because you also have to make sure that you're creative and that you come up with new ideas. And yeah, if you have just a few starting points, then that makes things just easier. I think this is just so valuable and also fun because you don't have to do it alone. You're, I guess you're in, in the course with other people who are on the same path, right? Oh yeah, right. That's exactly right. And I think that that's one of the things that I've learned that I like the most about it. They We have this thing called the community center where all of the students in the class can meet up and they post the stuff that they're working on. And I've just seen how much more work I make because of the enthusiasm of the group. Exactly. And so there's all of this accountability happening. It's an interesting thing. Like, it's not just me. Again, I'm not coming in to talk about this stuff and just being like, what if you guys did this? I don't do that, but it's this is what I do. So it's like the thing that I know how to talk about. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I am loving those llamas right now. <laughs> are we drawing alpacas? We're drawing llamas, right? Alpacas. I think these have... are llamas. Yeah, they're llamas. They're llamas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, I think ours turned out pretty different, but very really different. Stuff. I love seeing it side by side, though. 
And I think my clouds are actually a little bit inspired by your style, although your clouds look completely different. So maybe not. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, I feel like the clouds, there was something about those images where the clouds really stuck out to me. Yeah. And so I like that we both kind of really gave them a lot of weight in our drawings. Mine seem yeah. kind of like early morning kind mm -hmm. of fall clouds which are it's one of my favorite things we get a lot of that i love how they cast a shadow on the mountain oh yeah thanks yeah that's great well love I it think, okay let's, i think i'm done let's, yeah me too let's switch cameras i am um very thankful for you throwing these uh these images at me and i'm i'm kind of surprised how it went. I like how, you know, you can combine these things into your own thing. And we both made something completely different. And thanks for all the tips also. So give me a big plug. Where can people find this awesome course of yours? Okay. So I am going to be talking all about all of this business of illustration stuff at gettingpaidtodraw.com. And actually today, as this video is published, people can sign up. And when does the course start? The course starts, it'll be starting the following Monday. So we've got, you've got two weeks once you register or not the following, but the one right after it. So uh, after you register, then I get everybody kind of in the community center where they can introduce themselves, they get to meet each other. And then we've got about a week and a half of kind of getting everybody loaded and signed up. And then we jump right into it. Well, thank you so much. I hope uh, you get a lot of uh, fantastic uh, illustrators joining. Well, thanks so much. And I, I was great to be here. And next time we're going to do this over in Europe. Yes, let's. All right. Thanks, Mike. See you thank soon. Thank you for having me. Okay, bye. bye. Just one last tip. Catch up with a friend to draw together because you will feel so much happier afterwards. And connect it. You can find the link to Mike's course, Getting Paid to Draw, in the description of this video and I hope it's helpful. I hope you will have fun if you sign up. I'm sure you will because Mike is fun and you will learn a ton. And next week I'll be back with another Draw Tip Tuesday video. See you then. Bye!